Hello everybody, my name is Ace. I'll be your narrator, honorary voice actor, and scared companion this evening as we continue Burrows. Uh, sorry, this is going to be a later upload today as I have finally settled into um, my new place. I am living with other people now, so the schedule for recording is going to be a little bit more tight because I obviously don't want to, you know, disturb the other guests of the house. But I do have some time, uh, as my roommates are away, to slip in some recording. So without further ado, let's hop straight back on into it. Help! Someone slams the door with a heavy shoulder, knocking it off its hinges. Harsh daylight floods the room and I see Jesse, his broad frame casting a shadow across the room. Bad move, son. You too? Was everyone in on this? Oh, Ken is going crazy crazy. Jesse, don't hurt! He nods and swiftly clears the distance between them, grabbing Ken's wrists and squeezing until the weapon falls to the ground. Fucker. He rears back with his other fist, shoving a knee in Jesse's crotch. Oh. Really gonna low blow Ken? That's... No! Oh, Colt. The Martin quickly gets between them, hanging off of Ken's arm like a toddler. Gray, get out of here! <laughs> Colt's hair. You look better with the hat on, bro. I'm gonna keep it a buck. It takes a few seconds to register just how far this escalated and I pick myself up, charging out the door into the sunlight. Gray! Gray! Uh, bro is pissed. I'm tr like, last time around, we did, like, get some insight that he's, like, a little crazy. Let me go! Don't look back. I scurry out into the walkway and slam into the railing, nearly sailing over it. And seeing the long way down, I regain my balance and push off towards the stairs, running blindly as soon as I hit the grass. Gotta run. Escape. But... where? I slow down and catch my breath, collapsing onto a grassy knoll overlooking the open road. This is... So stupid. I'm fully awake now. It feels like early afternoon, though the skies are overcast, so it's hard to tell. The sun shines defiantly through the clouds, burning my sleep-deprived eyes. I feel a sting on my bicep and examine it to see small cuts, beads of dark blood forming towards the center. It must be from when he kicked me. One of his toes caught my arm. Feline claws are notoriously sharp. I lick the wound and press it on press on it with my other hand, wincing in pain. Ken. Tears start welling up again, not because of him this time. I don't know what I'm doing here with another group of people. People are complicated. Complications cause drama, drama causes pain. I'm so tired of causing others pain. The bleeding starts to slow down and I examine the cut. I furrow my brow, thinking about my attacker. I tried to be as careful as possible. I didn't flirt with him, I didn't take advantage of his vulnerability, I didn't even look him in the eye half the time. Honestly, I don't find him very attractive at all, even though, by all accounts, I should. I can't put my finger on why. Maybe it's just his personality? Just like Sam. It's just like Sam, isn't it? Except with him, I... I hear footsteps and turn around to see Colt standing behind me, huffing and puffing. Are you all right, Gray? Yeah, I think so. You're, a. Uh... Hmm? Oh, fuck, sorry. It's fine. Come, sit. Oh, okay. He brushes his tail out of the way and plops down next to me. Jesse. Hmm? Uh, he's calming Ken down. He tried... He stopped... He stopped trying to fight us just after you left. He was just kind of staring at the wall. Huh? Well, that's good, right? 
I don't trust him, Gray, and I don't think he should stay with us. You don't trust me either, remember? His whiskers twitch and he looks at the ground flustered. That's... You're different. This life, it's a hard one. You don't meet kind-hearted people very often. <laughs> you think I'm really kind? You're not, um, unkind. I reach over and pat him on the shoulder. I like this guy. Cold school. Well, uh, I'm gonna go check on the others. Uh, you get out here? I nod. Okay, stay put. He jumps to his feet and jogs back to the motel. Not so difficult after all. So it seems. I sigh and stretch out on the grass, watching the clouds roll by for a while. The sound of cars zipping by and the occasional gentle breeze almost lull me back to sleep, but my heart is still beating frantically in my chest. Emotions are... complicated. I'm happy I ran into people like Colt and Jesse. I'm sympathetic yet terrified of Ken, and I'm confused about what any of this has to do with the Golden Place. On top of all of that, I feel ashamed that I wanted to kill myself. Maybe even more ashamed that I'm still alive after making such a show of it. When I get back home, I know I'm going to get the most lip from Gene. He'd probably say something like, Anything to skip out on rent, eh? And kick me out for a week before Simone could convince him otherwise. Actually, knowing him, I could probably just pull that trump card I've been saving and finally top him. Okay. I'm getting out of my cell. First things first, let's figure out what to do with Ken. Gray. Uh, I jump in surprise and shriek, followed by a raspy cough. Ken, what the fuck? <coughs> Dude, relax. Like he has any business telling me to relax. I look past him and see Jesse and Colt watching us from the staircase. Jesse gives me a thumbs up while Colt smiles nervously. What do you want? He looks away for a moment, listening to the birds singing in the trees. It's a pretty song. I'm sorry for hurting you. I know, that's a dog shit apology considering. He sighs and sits next to me, leaning on his kneecaps. He speaks without looking at me. You know what you did, right? No, I don't. Ken rolls his eyes and chuckles to himself. It's whatever. I'm not mad about it anymore. Okay. I know I'm probably being the crazy one here, but whether or not you remember, it hurt me. Um, I'm sorry, something I did hurt you? Don't, apolog don't apologize, it's sort of oppressive that you even could. I am so lost. Yeah. That's the exact phrase I would be thinking in this situation. But in all seriousness, you have to promise me something. Another promise. <sighs> what? <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> That's a word. Thankfully, I am dating a man. <clears throat> I'm not a faggot, all right? Don't act that way around me. But you... No, whatever. Fine. I'm not a faggot either, for the record. I like women plenty, too. Neat. Still a fag. Okay, dude. Come on, Ken. I sigh and get up, taking a minute to stretch while Ken lights up a cigarette. How old are you anyway? Huh? I'm 21. Jeez, he looks way older than that. Life hasn't been kind to him. Yeah, he looks way older than 21. Timeline. Ken is born. 1930. Wait, where'd all my- <laughs> where'd all my timelines go? I guess when I moved my computer, um, all my fragments and stuff went away. I'll go back through the roots in, um, 
get all the timelines. Jeez, oh, I already read that. I'm 25, that makes me your senior. <laughs> okay, you want a cookie, Grandpa? That's exactly how I expected him to respond. Sheesh, what a brat. These post-war kids really have no manners. Anywhere, oh, anyway, there's something that's been nagging at me since last night. What? The conversation we had about weird shit. What kind of experiences have you had? He looks skeptical at first, but his expression becomes pensive. I give him as much time as he needs to collect his thoughts. This guy starts to shift towards early evening. I'd taken up to making daisy chains or looking for four-leafed clovers in the grass in the meantime. Jesse and Colt stayed nearby, watching us carefully the whole time. Colt came over a few times to sit with me and make small talk. I'm grateful for everyone's patience. I think they want things with Ken to work out as much as I do. Even if it's only for practicality's sake. Eventually, Ken clears his throat and I turn to face him eagerly. Okay, I wanted to make sure I rolled out the stuff that was just people messing with me. Well, there's a huge gray area with that, but still, here we go. He takes a deep breath. So I had to rip the radio out of my bike. I kept hearing things. What kind of things? Like I'd keep hearing my name, not just sometimes. Uh-huh. I would switch between stations, but it never stopped. They kept talking directly to me, from Frank, Sin from Frank Sinatra to the 6 o'clock news. What did they say? You know what you did. A chill goes up my spine. I've heard that phrase in my head many, many times. Whoa. What could they be talking about? Mm, I don't want to get into that yet. But I have to stay on the move. They're gonna get me if I stay in one place for too long. Something is clearly not clicking, though. Okay, anything else? That's the main one. Sometimes I see stuff that other people don't. I think I saw it behind you back during the fight. I think back to when he was brandishing that broken chair and wonder what his intentions might have been. But I don't bring it up. I see, you'll have to tell me next time you see it, we have to be more careful. He nods, not a shred of doubt behind his eyes. I think he has paranoid schizophrenia. And what about you, Gray? Well, my grandma would talk about magic a lot. Folklore from back in the old country. Where? I look to the side and try to say it quickly, in one breath. Ireland. Oh, okay. Right, well, to put it simply, she tried to show me the magic and everything growing up. At least whenever my father wasn't poking around. Sometimes I get the feeling they weren't just fairy tales, especially after what I told you before. There's a power. Sometimes I can feel it running through the grass when I lay on it. I have these dreams. Dreams of another me and another place. When I'm there, I swear I can see the trees bend to talk to each other like people do. I parted a river with my staff as if I was Moses himself. And sometimes, the me from that dream stays behind after I wake up. Do you ever just wake up and already in the middle of doing something? Like you don't remember how you got there? Yes, all the time. It scares the hell out of me. Ken looks at me with a genuine smile, the light of the setting sun catching his golden eyes. Me too, but we're not alone now. I just hope I don't jinx you. <laughs> I may believe in magic, but not dumb stereotypes. Yeah, right. I hear heavy footsteps behind us and look up to see Jesse standing over us, a goofy smile on his face. Colt's next to him, holding the rest of... Ken's, uh, Ken and I's clothes. Well, now, so nice to see the two of you getting along. 
Yeah, for now. Colt walks out from behind Jesse's back and helps me to my feet, dusting grass off my pants. Come on, we're gonna get some dinner before we hit the road again. Ken gets up with a groan, snatching his jacket out of the Martin's hands. Where at? My stomach growls loudly and I realize I haven't eaten in almost a day at this point. Yeah, where at? Colt looks disgusted at me, repeating Ken's mannerisms and clears his throat. There's a diner a few miles up in Shamrock. It'll be our last stop before crossing the border into Oklahoma. I still can't believe there's a whole town named that. Yeah, it almost sounds like a theme park. It's barely on the map, but it's on Route 44, so it's the closest option without taking a detour. Works for me. <laughs> let's get, let's go. I'm starved. We head back to the bikes and hit the road once again. This time, Ken rides a little closer, still taking up the rear. A diner's a great choice, especially for a mixed group like this. I have no idea if Ken's bratty behavior extends to his taste in food, but I want to avoid stressing him out. You're a babysitter now. Congratulations. Shush. Final notice for renters. It has come to the attention of this property's owner that there is an outstanding balance on apartment at 2F. The owner understands that while the original renter has provided no past issues, the recent addition to his slash her lease is at least partially responsible for this lapse in monthly rental payments. Thus, it is the owner's it is in the owner's power to ren What is that word? Renesh? I should I can't think of how to pronounce that word the previous arrangement unless the overdue amount is transferred directly to the owner's account within the next 10 business days. This can be done in the form of a check, money order, and or cash spent directly at the owner's place of business. Tips are recommended. Failure to do so will result in that individual's immediate eviction. Sincerely, Jean Rene Baptiste. Tiny sounds of life or Tiny signs of life start to dart by as we approach the outskirts of the town. Sheds, farmhouses, even a few modest dwellings. Eventually, we reach the parking lot for the diner and pull in. Uh, does this place have a drive through <laughs> This ain't McDonald's, kid. What's McDonald's? Some fast food joint that opened a few years ago. Start seeing them pop up everywhere along the roads. Tiny little wafer thin burger, zero nutrition. I give Ken a concern to look and he just shrugs. What? It's, oh, what? It's cheap. I'm not exactly employed right now. Me neither. Oh, fuck. I pull out my wallet and dig through it desperately. It's empty. I look towards Jesse and Colt laughing awkwardly. So... Just this once, only because you two are youngins. Breaks my heart to see kids eating like crap when their bodies are still growing. Jesse's a good guy. Colt rolls his eyes and gently punches my shoulder. Damn, Colt's 30? Sheesh. I'm 30 and he still says the same thing to me, don't worry. He's just an old codger. Guilty as charged. Now, come on, let's get some grub. Timeline. Ken is born. Colt is born. Ah. As we head closer, I can hear the sounds of people coming from inside, in between muffled notes of music. Ken slows his walk, looking around nervously. Ken? You know, I saw these diners that have the girls bring the food to you or to your car on roller skates. Eh. Maybe they have something like that. I'd rather just stay out here. Jesse notices we stopped and scoops us up in his arms, pushing us towards the front door. Nonsense! In this family, we eat at the table. Ah, uh, he probably is really weird with crowds. <laughs> family? He's taking the fatherly role a little too literally, I think. 
We crowd by the front and wait to get seated. Curious, I peek over Jesse's so Oh, sorry. Jesse's shoulder to see what sort of place this was. Whoa, this is spiffy. I love how shiny everything is, and the colors are great too. Things back home seem so drab in comparison. I thought there was live music playing, but instead I see a brightly lit jukebox in the corner. It almost sounds like the blues, but a little more soulless. Like they took the music we sang at church and let the dogs run wild with it. Actually, Adonis sang just fine, with just nothing compared to how Simone interpreted the songs. She felt it with her mind, body, and soul. We get greeted by our waitress, a cocker spaniel, who seems to be on the verge of tears at the end of every sentence. Hello, fellas. <laughs> Table for four. Uh, yes, is everything all right, ma'am? <laughs> of course. Uh, don't be silly. Come this way. She struggles to walk in even sensible heels and leads us over to a booth. Score. Ken and Colt immediately drifted for the window seats, scooting into the booth at the same time. Their looks of elation quickly shift as they lock eyes and start growling, disgusted at the possibility of being similar in any way. Boys, boys. Jesse turns to me and nods in their direction. Alright, Gray. Choice is yours. Uh, right. Realistically, I would sit next to Colt, but you know, I think if we don't sit next to Ken, he'll get sad. I will sit next to Ken. I cautiously slide in next to Ken, hearing him suck his teeth when our thighs touch. You just wanted to sit here so you didn't have to look at me. What? No way. I wanted to make sure you were all right. Oh, well, that's nice of you. Thanks. You're always nice, huh? I don't know about always. <laughs> sure thing, Boy Scout. Maybe you should give it a try. Who knows? It could pay off. Who, <coughs> me? That is so not my thing, dude. Don't you get to decide what defines you, though? Doesn't always feel like it. He looks past Colt's head to a baby staring over at us from the next table over. Ken clears his throat and smiles wide, or should I say, bares his fangs in a way he thinks is smiling. Oh, Ken. The bird's eyes glisten with tears. Shit. Little dove starts bawling her eyes out. The mother sighs and scoops her up, shaking her head at us while simultaneously shushing and rocking the crying infant. Ken buries his face in the collar of his jacket, and I try to stifle a giggle. Fuck you, man. I'm proud of you for trying. Anyway, what should I get? What should I get? It's been a long time since I sat down somewhere to eat. Hmm. What's your favorite meat? Come on, Ken. Faggot. Fuck you. What about you then? What are you eating? Uh, probably just a burger. I'm not picky. Hmm. Burger doesn't sound half bad. Wonder if they sell any good beer. So loud. Everyone looks at me puzzled. Uh, pardon? Is this place you know? I flick my cl clover pin. Yes? <sighs> okay then. I have no idea what that means either. Wait. Aren't you driving after this? Oh, no worries. I was just gonna buy a few cans and keep them in the trunk until we found a place for the fridge. Cans? Yeah, if it's not tapped, there's no point. 
Are you like barely drinking age? What do you know about good beer? I know I'm gonna need a couple if I'm gonna be around you lot. Be nice. Eventually, our waitress comes to take our orders, still sniffling after every word. Sorry for the... Wait, gentlemen, how can I help you? Can we help you? She starts giggling nervously, looking around as if this was some sort of prank. Oh, you kidder, I love a man with a sense of humor. Love. A single jet black tear rolls down her face. Oh dear, uh, some powder will keep your mascara from running, you know. Ken, stop. <clears throat> Faggot. Anyway, I think we're all having burgers. And one tuna melt. Three burgers and a tuna melt. Alright, any drinks besides water? I think we've had enough waterworks for the night. I'll have a Coke and a few cans of Miller for the road. She wipes her face, smearing the line of black across her cheek. ID, please. Jesse gives her an exasperated look, gesturing to his graying muzzle. Unless you don't want to. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Here. He leans over to give her a tiny plastic card. She carefully examines it before whistling, eyes wide. Yes, yes, I'm an old sea dog. I'll just get a seltzer. I'll have a Coke, too. I'll have a Shirley Temple. Timeline, how old are you, sir? Ken, Colt, Jesse, 1916. God damn, you're old, sir. A profound silence falls across the table. We all just stare. What? <laughs> that was your perfect chance to call him one back, buddy. Nothing? It just sounds a little... fruity? <laughs> Fuck you guys. As she walks away, I notice a gopher staring at me from across the room, sitting at the counter. He's... He's dabbing his sweaty forehead with a cloth and stealing glances, looking away when I give him a confused expression. Weird. You know that guy, Gray? Sure don't. Never seen him before in my life. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh... Suddenly, a tiny paper ball bounces off Colt's forehead, landing in his water cup. What the? Who, who did that? I hear snickering from the table behind us and turn around to see a group of teenagers in leather jackets. A fox is already preparing another ball. Well, it, I can never pronounce this dog breed. It's like this Dosh... Doshund? Gets ready to flick it in our direction. Fucking kids. Really? You're gonna try it again while I'm looking right at you? Hits him right between the eyes and he shoots up, knocking the table loudly with his knee. Little shit. They burst into laughter, fist bumping as the fox watches on, smirking proudly. <laughs> what? It's funny. Uh, can we change tables? I don't see any more booths. Just keep your cool and be mature. That's not keeping your cool and being mature, Colt. He sits back down with a huff, arms crossed. They continue throwing paper at us for a while, but stop when we don't give them any reactions. Soon our food comes and we chow down, me and Ken finishing our burgers in a matter of seconds. Oh boy, <laughs> you fellas were hankering for some grub. <laughs> Pardon, I was about to pass out. It's been a while since I had a good meal. Hey, do you want those fries? Yes? Can I? One. He grins deviously and grabs a fistful of fries, shoving them in his mouth. Ken? <laughs> Honestly, you're as bad as those kids behind us. <laughs> kids? 
Yo, Tony, you just called this some fucking kids. I whip around and see the fox leaning over the back of our seat, baring his teeth. He must be Tony. Those are choice words coming from a couple of geezers. I know geezer twerp. What did you just say? Oh, great. Ken he ignores me and turns to face the fox, tightly gripping a fork. Oops. Why don't you and your little chums from nursery school run along and play hopscotch or something? <laughs> oh, you're gonna regret that, kitty. Like, bro. Ken would fucking destroy this guy. I, this is a mistake. Is that a threat, Greaseball? Jesse jumps across the table and pulls Ken back while I get in between him and the fox. Come on now, let's avoid causing any problems while we're in town. We're guests here, after all. Yeah, listen to Grandpa, kitty. Colt, go pay the bill. We're leaving. Right. Two steps ahead of you. Come on, guys. He whistles loudly, and his cohorts snap to attention, scrambling for the door. He slaps some bills down on the counter and gives us a final sneer before walking out. We sigh in relief. Ken merely rolls, rolling his eyes at us. Righty, Ken. That took restraint. Yeah, yeah. Let's just pay the bill and get out of here. Jesse and Colt trot over to the front desk and I get up too, keeping my eyes on the door as Ken exits after me. Just ignore him if he's still out there. Mm. I feel a tap on my shoulder and whip around to see that sweaty gopher from before standing in front of me. Um, uh, with all due respect, sir, uh, what are you doing here? Huh, sir? What are you... And to be seen with the ruffians of that nature. His eyes narrow in Colt and Jesse's direction. Julian, what is going on here? I think you had the wrong person, mister. I look over his shoulder and see our waitress making a phone call behind the counter, eyes darting between Ken and I. Hey, this guy giving you trouble? Oh, I, uh, I don't think so. His eyes drift over to the waitress and grow wide in panic. We need to get out of here. I've already alerted the authorities, Julian. I need you to stay. Bastard. <laughs>